so hello and in today's video I'm going to discuss about equivalent fractions and if time permits on for the limit YouTube limit I'll also cover the cross products or else we'll cover it in the next video so now let us first try to understand equivalent fractions consider the three examples given here we have three figures now let us write down the fractions for each of these so this is the first uh, square in which we have divided into two parts and we have to write down the fraction that is represented by the colored shape now so first we write down the two uh, the total parts so we have one and two so the denominator is two and since one part is covered this one with blue color so we write this as one so the fraction that is represented by this figure is 1 by 2. Now this is the another figure, the same uh, square but it has been divided into 4 parts and now we are supposed to write down the fraction represented by this. So we have 4 parts here, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So our denominator becomes 4 and the shaded parts are 2. So the numerator will be 2. So we are considering 2 parts out of 4 parts. Now this is the third figure in which we have divided the square into six equal parts and the fraction represented by, by that would be denominator consists of the total parts which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So the denominator is 6 and the numerator is 1, 2 and 3 because three parts are shaded. Now we need to observe these examples very carefully. What happens if you superimpose or you stack figure 1 on figure 2 and 3? That is all the three figures are stacked on top of each other. So what happens? What is the difference that you would see? What is the uh, what, what happens to the shaded part? Is the shaded part different? It would be the same because in all the three cases what happens is we have just shaded the half part of the square. The only thing that is different is the number of parts into which each of these figures are divided. So can we can I say that the shaded part is the same for these three figures? Can I say something for these as well? For these fractions that we have said? I can say that these fractions 1 by 2, 2 by 4 and 3 by 6, they are representing the same part of the whole that we are considering here. So these type of fractions which represent the same part of the whole they are known as equivalent fractions. Now when we look at this how, 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 how did we come up with the equivalent fractions? So what happens we have this now 1 by 2 here. The first fraction that we had was 1 by 2. What I did is we multiplied it by 2 that is we multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by 2 and what we got was 2 by 4 which is nothing but this fraction here the second fraction so essentially what we have done is we have just divided the square into more parts we have into just divided the parts by 2 right now how about the third fraction? So we take the first one which is like 1 by 2 and when we multiply it by 3, both the numerator and denominator are multiplied by 3, what we get is the third fraction which is 3 by 6. So essentially we are just playing with the number of parts that are the, uh, the number of parts into which we are dividing the whole but essentially the fraction that is represented by the shaded figure remains the same. So this is the concept of an equivalent fraction. Now let us explore this formally. So uh, we just looked at it and found out that equivalent fractions represent the same part of the whole. Now there are two ways in which we can find out equivalent fraction for a given fraction. The first part is straightforward which, you, which we just saw when we were discussing the example. In that what we did is we just multiplied the numerator and denominator by a number 
and we figure out that when we divide the numerator and denominator by the same number we do not make any change to the fraction essentially it is it represents the same part of the whole the only key thing is both the numerator and denominator must be multiplied by the same number so now if it is asked that find equivalent fractions for this fraction 1 by 2 what we can do is simply multiply both the numerator and denominator by the a same number so for example i mean uh, earlier the, the fraction that we considered was 1 by 2 and we found out 2 and let us try another fraction so let us say we have 1 by 2 and i am multiplying them by both the numerator and denominator by 4 so the equivalent fraction that I get is 4 by 8. I can find another fraction. So let us say that I am multiplying the numerator and denominator of our original fraction 1 by 2 by let us say 8 by 8. This is the 8. So 1 into 8 is 8 and 2 8s are 16. So in this way you can just find out a huge number of equivalent fractions. Essentially what we have to do is just multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. Similarly, we can do it for the another example that is 3 by 5. So we can just multiply them by let us say we take another number 2. And then what we have is 3 times 2 is 6 and 5 times 2 is 10. So this is another equivalent fraction. Then we can also take another example like we can take another number by which we can multiply the numerator and denominator in this case let us say we take 5 so we have 3 times 5 is 15 and 5 times 5 is 25 so 3 by 5 right? two equivalent fractions for 3 by 5 are 6 by 10 and 15 by 25 and you can find out as many as you wish by simply changing the number by which we are going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of the fraction so having said that there is also another way in which we can find out an equivalent fraction now in this case what we have seen 3 by 5 so both of these the number the numerator and denominator they have just one common factor which is 1 but what if we are given a number like 6 by 10 and we want to find out an equivalent fraction of it so the second method is just like the inverse of the multiply method but in order to understand it, let us use a figure. So let us say that we have this figure 1 here and we want to represent a fraction using this. So what is the fraction represented by this? So we have how many parts? First we count the parts. We have 3 and 3, 6 parts. So 6 comes in the denominator and 4 parts, 1, 2, 3 and 4. 4 parts have been shaded. So 4 by 6 is the fraction. Now let us take a look at this another figure. See these two figures are same but essentially now the parts into which we have divided the whole is different. Here we had one single triangle. In this case we have two triangles as a single unit. Uh, uh, one part is comprised of two triangles. So how do I represent this? So we how many total parts we have? 1, 2 and 3. So we have 3 comes out to be the denominator and how many parts are shaded? We have this is one part is another part so this is 2 by 3 now is there any relationship between 4 by 6 and 2 by 3 if you really understand how did I come get from this how can I change it to this so what we have done is we have just divided the number of parts into half so here we have six parts here we have divided into three parts so it's like we have divided both the numerator and denominator by the same number which is 2 and which gave us this. So this is a pictorial representation of what happens when we divide fractions. So using this concept, uh, the other way to find out equivalent fractions for a, for a fraction which has a common factor right, is to divide it by a common factor. So let's say that we have this 12 by 15. And we want to find out an equivalent fraction so what we can do is we can divide both the 12 and 15 by a common factor so we know that both 12 and 15 can be divided by 3 so when I divide 12 by 3 what we get is 4 and for 15 we have 5 so 4 by 5 is an equivalent fraction for 12 by 15 you can also multiply it of course you can multiply it by the same number but this is another way in which we can use division 
to obtain an equivalent fraction. Now having said that, let us quickly summarize what we learned about the equivalent fractions. So the equivalent fractions represent the same part of the whole and the methods to find equivalent fractions is first we multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. That is first method and the second method is to divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. That is this we use when we see that both the numerator and denominator have a common factor. And this one should be used when we observe that the numerator and denominator do not have any common factor except one. So essentially you should just remember MOD which says multiply or divide and using the test above you can figure out whether you want to use multiplication or the division to find out the equivalent fractions.